Hi guys, today we're going to be making a can punch slash bottle opener, a tool that can do two things. It's a great intro to metalwork project. First thing we need is a piece of band iron. This is an eighth of an inch thick. I'm going to be going with something that is one inch wide, but you can also use three quarter and just change a couple of dimensions as you go throughout the project. The main tools that we're going to be using for this, I've laid out on the table already, so you can kind of plan ahead with what you're going to need. You're not going to need all of them right away, and you can go grab them as you need it from your tool board. One of the first tools you're going to need is a hacksaw. For any of our layout, I'll be using a scribe. You could also just use a sharp nail or a really fine tip sharpie pen. I'll be using a center punch to put dents in the metal before I drill. The two drill bits that I will be using will be a 964, you could also use a 1 8 and a 3 8 drill bit. I also have a countersink for adding basically a chamfer or a countersink to some of the holes. To hold this project together we will be using 8 inch rivets. To hold the rivets I'll be using a rivet set. This is not necessary but we're going to be using that for this one. Some of the other tools that we will find handy for this project will be a square for doing layout, a file card for cleaning your files, a ruler or something that you can use to lay out measurements, sandpaper or emery cloth of some kind, your safety glasses, and at some point you're going to need a hammer. First thing you're going to need, your ruler, a scribe, metal, and your saw. Using the set of plans you can follow through the procedures as we go. These measurements that we're going to be doing for this project are all done in Imperial. So first thing we need to do is line up our ruler. We're going to measure six and a half inches long. Make a mark with our scribe. We have two cuts we're going to be making. One is that one at six and a half. We also have another one we are going to measure at three and one quarter. If I measure from here to here, three and one quarter, then that means from here to here is going to be two and three quarters. I'm gonna measure both of them out and hope that I cut them both perfect. I'm gonna do my short one first so that if I screw up my cut, I can just re-measure and fix my line here. Start on a slightly downward angle, not flat. The edges can be very sharp, so we want to file those off so that we don't accidentally cut our fingers while we're working. Hold it in a vise, get a file of some kind. We're going to be using a mill bastard just to get that smooth. And just round over your edges. Every time you cut something, it's probably going to be a little sharp. If I can, I can also make these nice and flat. I will be changing them later. There will only be one flat side when we're done. Once you've made all the ends square, you can check that with this. That looks pretty good to me. That one's a little off, but I'm going to change that one later. You need to get rid of all the black scale. And we're going to get smooth, so it just shows nice bare metal. I'm going to hold it in my vise just slightly above the jaws so that I can file it without destroying the jaws on my vise. Take a file and clean that up. So right now I'm cross filing. I'm going across the metal. That's good to get it rough with something like a flat bastard. I can switch over to a mill bastard. That's a finer cut file and draw a file to finish if I like. It doesn't have to be perfect. Just make it look good. If you want, you can also finish it off with some sandpaper or emery cloth. Do that to your remaining pieces, front and back. Every now and then use the file card to clean your file. By finishing with a draw file technique, you're going to get all the lines going in one direction and that's going to make it look really nice. 
As you're working with this, be careful the metal will heat up due to friction. Don't burn your fingers. Use a pair of gloves or some tongs or pliers to hold your material if needed. Next thing we're going to do is lay out all these measurements from the plans onto here. Now we've got two pieces of metal. The way that this project is actually going to go, if you look at the left one, the shorter piece is going to go on the left, this one goes on the right, and they're going to get sandwiched together like this. The longer piece here, that one underneath. Okay? So the short piece, this is going to go from the point down to the dotted line. So from here to here represents the short piece. The longer piece is represented from this pyramid with the tip cut off down to this hook. So that's going to go from about here to here. Let's start with piece number two. That's the easy one. I'm going to start with a line right down the center because I'm going to have a point and two holes that are going right down the center. So regardless if this is one inch wide, three quarter wide, half inch wide, it doesn't matter. I want a line right down the middle to lay out where my point and where my holes are going to be. Here we have, let's go from the dotted line up, one half inch or 0.5 inches. That's going to be the location of one of our first holes. From there up, three quarters of an inch from here, we can locate that. And then our center, that's fairly easy. For that, we're going to be measuring down three quarters and going on an angle. You do not need to actually know what that angle is, as long as you go from the center down to a location marked at three quarters. I'm gonna make a small three quarter line and then use my square to locate where those are going to be. So there you can see I have two dots, one, two, and I'll center punch those to make it easier. And I have a line going across. I'm gonna go take this to the anvil and punch those two lines with a center punch. Using a center punch and a hammer, get those lines exactly where they need to be. They need to be three quarters of an inch apart. Take your time, line up your hole, get your face right down there and check. Second one, take your time, line it up. So one piece laid out, let's lay out the other one. This has many more measurements, so we're going to take our time with this. Let's start with the center line like we did before. If your material is one inch wide, it needs to be a half inch in the middle to find the center line. If it's three quarters of an inch wide, you're going to have to do a little bit more math, won't you? So there's my center line. Let's start adding the other things. I'm gonna start by adding my three holes. One, two, and there's gonna be a third one down here for a larger three eight inch hole. So those two are now three quarter inch apart. Let's go down to the very, very bottom. It looks like I have to measure up five eighths to find the center of this one. Find five eighths on your rule. X marks the spot. And now we have a couple other things that we're going to have to lay out here. I'm not going to lay these lines out until I've actually drilled the hole. That's going to make it easier for me. At the very top we have this pyramid with the tip cut off. So let's draw that out. For this one I need to measure down 5 eighths to find my line and a quarter inch across here. And I can go and connect those together. So the original plans for this called for three quarter inch wide. I only had one inch, 
but it doesn't matter. Just follow the same things. So the proportions might look a little bit off, but that will not matter. We have three holes to lay out here. Let's get those done. One, two, three. We're gonna start with our 964 drill bit. Install that into your chuck. Make sure it's straight. Use your chuck key, tighten it up. Check the speed of the drill press. Make sure you're wearing your safety glasses. I have my pieces. I'm going to do, on the short piece, I'm gonna do two holes. And on the longer piece, I'm actually only gonna do top and the bottom. I'm gonna leave the middle for now, just in case my holes don't line up perfectly. I can change it later. Use a vise to hold your work. If you're just starting out, I recommend line up your holes while the machine is off. There we go, pretty good. Go slowly. Don't use your fingers to brush things away. Use a towel or a brush, and don't do it while the machine is running. Next piece. You can see that I'm using this slot to help hold things up. That's gonna make it easier to hold the thing straight. Now, even though the bottom hole is 3 8 I'm actually going to pre-drill it with this small one just to make sure that it's going to be perfectly centered. Switch over to your 3 8 drill bit and drill that here. Make sure your drill bit is pointed the right direction when you install it. Only hold it by the shaft or the shank. If you want to be extra safe, you could clamp your vise down to the table so that it can hook it. Before touching this, it may be a little bit warm, so either let it cool down or use pliers to actually handle your material. You can do this step now or a little bit later, but we can use a countersink to countersink one side of this hole right here. This is going to allow the rivet, that when we smash it, to have a little bit more bite. Line this up. And that's it. Just a very small countersink there. After drilling, you'll usually notice that there's a little bit of blowout or a small burr on the back side of where you drilled. That's easily fixed with either a file or with a large drill bit. The drill bit will just use its teeth, basically, or the flutes to bite that off a little to make it smoother. Or use a file. Just so that you don't cut your fingers while you're working. Next, let's cut out all the pieces that we need to with a hacksaw. I'm gonna start with the short piece. Here you can see the triangle on the top. I've positioned this so that when I use my hacksaw cut, I can just go straight down. I'm purposely gonna cut it just a little bit big on this side so I can file or grind it down perfectly. I'll then flip over and do this side.
So piece number two here, that one's finished. So I'm just gonna leave that to the side for now. This one here, I still have to cut the tops off and add this hook to the bottom that will allow me to easily open the tops of bottles or bottle caps. For this, I'm gonna be measuring from the edge of my hole down to the center point to get a nice angle. Let's find that center point and let's line that up here. Next, there's one line right there. It is a 16th of an inch lower than the center of that hole. So I'm gonna to wanna to measure that and make sure it's good. So now, all of this space here, that needs to get cut away. You can see there, there's that small little lip that's what's going to allow us to grab underneath the bottle cap. So I've made that right here. So I'm going to cut this out. I'm going to round this edge. Now it's more for an aesthetic look. And then I got to chop the tops of that part off and smooth it out as you've seen before. Always cut slightly bigger than you need to. See, I don't cut it perfect. I always cut a little big to give me room to either file or grind down. If I make it too small, I have to start all over again. But if I make it big, I can just slowly bring it down until it gets to that line right there. Never cut right on your line. Always cut a little to the waist edge and then file it down. Rough cut, and now we're gonna file down edges or grind them until they're perfect. If you don't like using the bench grinder, use a file, it's just a little slower. Don't forget to cool your material every now and then so you don't burn your hands. if there's a couple little dents in it from your work. If anything, that helps to show it's gonna be well used. Next step we have to do is bending the tips. What we are looking for here is piece number two, the back piece. You follow this little dotted line, is gonna have a curve like that. The second piece is only gonna have a very small tip that's gonna be curved. That's gonna allow you to grab the top of a can. I'm just gonna use a piece of paper towel this time to protect it just so I can see a little bit better what I'm doing. I'm gonna use a ball peen hammer, use the flat side, and I'm gonna be smacking it here until I can get my desired curve. I will then check with my plans and see how much straight or slight curve I will have. If you notice that it's just curving and just bending, bring it down a little bit in your vise. Let's see how it looks according to this, the plans. So as you can see, I still have a little bit more curve to go until it kind of matches there. I'm happy with that. Next one is this piece. You need to make sure that when you're hitting it, you're gonna be hitting it in the correct direction. If this is the exposed face, I need this smack towards me. So hit it in the direction of your countersink. If you screw this up, you're gonna to have to flip the whole thing over and re-countersink the other side. So make sure you're hitting it the right way. Uh, 
How does it look according to our plans? I think I need to go just a little bit more. So it's not a very long curve. So if I have to, maybe I can even flip it upside down. Let's try this again. You can also put it together and line up the holes. There we go, top hole. Turn it sideways so you can see exactly how much space you have. If it looks similar to your drawing, which is there, then you're good. You just need to have a little bit of a gap. I might hit it just one more time so we can have a little bit more bite. So just one more tiny hit. Oh, perfect. Put those two together. I think it's about time to rip it. We have two different sizes of rivets. Here I have half of an inch long and three eighths long. If you only use the three eighths, it's not gonna stick out too far. So I'll pop it through here, pop it through the back. You can see it sticks out just a little bit. If I use the half inch, you can see it sticks out a lot. The final product will be based on personal preference. When I smack this down, it'll create a little bump or a mushroom similar to the side of this rivet. This will give me a larger bump, maybe more strength. If I use the 3 8 it'll only stick out a little bit. A smaller bump when I'm all done. The 3 8 is long enough for this project, so use the 3 8 long rivet. So to assemble, you'll be taking your top curved piece, do all your sanding ahead of time if you need to do any more sanding, put your rivet through this way on the top. See the way the curve goes? Take your next piece, make sure you don't go backwards. See this? You'll get a bump. I want to see the two curves going in the same direction up, okay? Put that through. Now it looks kind of like the set of plans. I'm gonna hold the round side of the rivet, put it into the hole. Using a ball peen hammer, I'm gonna hit around the outside of the rivet to create kind of a mushroom shape. Don't smack your fingers. Only hit the rivet. Take your time, there's no rush. You can get this done in under a minute and you'll be fine. But now you can see the two pieces won't come apart because the rivet is holding it together. Excellent. I like to have kind of a rough finish here on the end. Next, grab your second rivet and put it through the hole. Oh, darn it, it won't go. Before I can stick my next rivet through, I need to finish drilling the hole. This is why I did not drill that second hole there. This way, I'm gonna use this as a guide, drill right through, countersink it, and then add my rivet. I'm gonna hold it near the top, just so I can see it, make sure everything is flat. Use the vise to squish the two together if they are misaligned a little bit. So use this open side as your guide. Do your best to keep it nice and flat. Check that everything is aligned. Make sure you have the correct drill bit. Again, I'm using a 964th drill bit, which is just slightly bigger than the rivet I'm using. That makes it a little bit easier for students to get it right. Install your countersink bit. What side are we going to countersink? The side that we are going to hammer. Install your rivet, make sure they match. You want both bumps on the top, and that way it's sticking out the bottom. So, bump on the top right here, make sure they match. Install in your rivet head, ball peen hammer. Again, choke up on it to make it easier to hold. Make sure there's no gap or any light coming through here. That's how you can tell that it looks good. And there you have it, 99% finished. All that's left is to polish it up. Some sandpaper, we can polish, you could paint, you could heat it up and dip it in hot oil to give it a nice little coating. Whatever you like for your finished product.
So after doing some oil blackening, we have this nice, basically rust proof tool. Now before we actually use it on anything, it's probably a good idea to clean it up, make sure there's no actual excess oil or anything on there. I might give this a uh, polish on the buffing wheel. Let's see how that turns out. But it feels really nice and smooth after that oil bath. So just one more tiny hit. 